want to, and also if you want to leave or continue. <laughs> leave really? me. Okay. I'm out of here. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we are going to be awarding our second winner of the year of the second. <laughs> uh, to the Keep going. Bye. It's good. It's good. <laughs> There's a lot of seconds and words there. But anyways, my name is McNeil, doing real good at my job. Um, join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Phil Collin and Wes Harden. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. Hey. 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 Hello, hello. Second, second that. To you, second. Yes. Second. There's second. seconds and years. I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll have to work on that. Maybe it's uh, just bad writing. So uh, yeah. we've got a whole year. We got a whole year to get this thing ironed out. So I'm sure. Sure we'll month month six, I'm going to kill it. Yeah. So we've got a fun show today. Uh, we do different judges and things like that. So McNew and I are the constants, but then we get some different judges in. So Wes Harden is here. Hey, Wes, how you doing, man? Hey, Steve, what's going on? Uh, not much. Glad to have you a part of this. And of course, Phil Collin. And I thought, Phil Collin with the studio audits, we got to have him do some impressions. Right, <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. On the spot. I was just. Uh, does anybody, say, uh, I think each of the uh, the other the three co hosts get to, get to uh, you know, throw out something out and you do the impression okay oh great that's our small talk segment that's that, that's um great yeah, right. i love right. it not right. even right. prepared haven't done Wes, my vocal exercises Wes, we'll have you go first what would you what would you like to see phil do he's got a pretty large repertoire of you know impressions that he does yeah. i think he's done this one before but i i just can't help myself i want to hear his scooby-doo oh great all right it's a combo. It's a uh, it's Scooby and Shag. So, so, so this is Shaggy uh, realizing he overpaid too much for a bottle of bourbon. Gee, Scoob, it says well on the label, but I think I accidentally got a little Forrester. <laughs> oh no! So there you go. That's Scooby and Shaggy. <laughs> wow! I thought that was Don Messick. I thought that was the original Scooby. Yeah. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, Casey, 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 Frank Weller were in the. Yeah. Oh my God! Welker, oh. all right, yeah, that's one. All right, let's keep it going. All right, I'm all right good. McNew, McNew, uh, what, what would you like? Gilbert Gottfried oh. voicing Iago. Okay, all right. Oh, <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried. Okay, here we go. I'm telling you, something's up with that Aladdin guy. No one has a flying rug in the princess's castle like he does. Block. There we go. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried uh, doing the voice of the parrot from Aladdin. Okay. Wow. Okay. Did you? These are. We're gonna run out of my creative juices. I think we're gonna hit a wall. And things uh, are gonna well, exist. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really uh, throw you a bone here. I'm gonna help you out because I know you, you like to do several different judges, you know. So, so you know, you you do Paul Hollywood, you sure. do Gordon Ramsay, who of serves course. as a judge on some yeah. shows, uh, Simon Cowell, uh, yeah. maybe even a 1920 firefighter uh, judge. I'll let, you, judge. Sure, yeah. I'll let you do an impression of your favorite judge right now, since you're a judge for tonight's event. All right. You got me thinking about Simon Cowell because this came up earlier. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do Simon Cowell. You got to imagine uh, a black t-shirt with the uh, unbuttoned and scruff and, and just a smarmy look on his face. All right. That was terrible. There you go. Short and sweet. <laughs> I didn't realize he was Irish. Yeah, he is uh, he's from the northern. Uh, it's Belfast. That's Belfast. It's Belfast. Belfast version of Simon Cow. <laughs> I've never heard anything so terrible in my life. Uh, and so when you edit the show, include the first two impressions, but make sure you leave out oh, no. Simon Cow. Oh, no. Yeah, that's got to stay. That's That was amazing. Yeah, on yeah. the spot. Oh, you channeled him. I enjoyed Gilbert Godfrey. Thank you for that, McNew. That was a treat oh, for me. You're welcome. It just popped out of my head. Ha have you done Gilbert Godfrey on the show before? Not on the show, no. I didn't no. think so. Okay, yeah. I Only in was... the company of friends and family. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. All right. Well, so we, we, to, to, we, my friends and I have a list of comedians. We find hilariously unfunny and we make fun of them by doing impressions. Gilbert Gottfried, uh, Louis, um, uh, Anderson? Guy, Louis, yes. yeah, Louis Anderson and a few others. So, so we make fun of them by doing impressions of them. So. Okay. All right. Sounds good. What does everyone drinking? Let's, uh, let's get Phil a drink. Cause he, yes, he, please. he a lot of work. Phil deserves this. a drink. He deserves <laughs> by a all drink. means. Uh, tonight, we're going to do a little Wilderness Trail, uh, just their Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, a single barrel, and the lovely yellow label. So all the information in the bottle. And here we go. Oh, so quiet. So quiet. Okay. I'm going to go next because you're still going to have the lead. I'm going to go Makers 101, but that is a screw top. So is it? Not in the know. contest. It's a screw top. Yeah. I did not know that. I have an unopened bottle. Then. All right, Wes, you're next. I'm not competing as well. I've got a sample of... Uh... 
dusty here. It's a 1947 WM Gainer. Wow. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. Wow. That's a good one. All right, here's where we're at, McNew. Phil didn't have much there, but he's got the lead <laughs> right now. Uh, he could win this thing. What do you got? Let's see. I have a bottle of Starlight Old Rick House double, double oak dry. I think Woo! Phil got it. I think Not we got a it. lot of what? Hachi machi, what a night. How about that? Cheers, gang. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. All right. What we're going to do next, we'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, we'll introduce this month's contestants, and even better than that, they're going to be making their cocktails here. We'll do that in just a few. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily Cocktail Contest version. It's month two, and here are our contestants. Yes, we are. So I'd like to introduce all three. This will be the order that we're going in. So we'll uh, we'll talk to each uh, individually, of course. But for right now, I just kind of want to go around the horn, if you will. So first up is the birthday boy, Dave Ewalds. Dave Ewalds, it's his birthday today, and he's here Dave, with happy us. Happy birthday, Dave. Recording the show. So happy birthday. birthday, Dave. Thank you. Happy Don't ask me how old I am, but I'm old enough to know better. At least okay. Google <laughs> Don't say much. All right. And uh, you wore your Tommy Bahama shirt today. I think that's always good. You want to yep. play up to the judges? It's, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, this is playing towards the judges. I don't think that's fair. Oh, no, that's, we wouldn't do that at all. Oh, I wouldn't do that it's, at it's all. Playing, it's playing to a judge. Playing against three others. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. You have a Dana and all black, and I'm supporting that too. So, okay. Well, a little lesser looking dapper. McNew, you're looking extra beautiful tonight. <laughs> and Phil, you just suck. <laughs> I said I was looking good. Was oh, Phil's looking good. Phil looks like he's got some buttons happening. Yeah. Dave, yeah. what are you going to be making tonight? Just the, yeah. the name of the drink, not into the details yet. I'm going to be making a drink I call the Five Roses. Okay. All right. Should be interesting. Of course, this month's ingredient is edible flowers, <sighs> and the theme is Mayflowers. So that sounds like it's going to fit well into that. So, Dave, welcome. Good luck today, okay? Yeah. All right. Next up is going to be Kevin Rose. Kevin, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. And yourself? I'm doing well as well. Yes. So very excited. It's not your birthday, is it? It, it is not, and I won't sing happy birthday because I know that can get into like some legal oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. rights issues, and and we don't I don't want you to have legal problems. Yeah, I don't want I, yeah I don't want them coming after me. So yeah, uh, that, those happy that, birthday people are just vicious. They're they're tough. They they really are. <laughs> so what's the name of your cocktail, Kevin? Called buzzing around your hive. Buzzing around oh. your hive. Okay, all right. Sounds interesting. Should be should be fun. All right. Well, congratulations for for getting to this far, Kevin, and and good Thank luck you. tonight. Hopefully, you bring it on home. Okay. All right. And next up, last but not least, is the cocktail guru herself, Adina Ewald. Hey, Adina, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks. All right. I'm going to be making a drink for you. I call the Bloma Krona. It's a Swedish word for flower crown. What a name. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I'll uh, talk a little bit more about that when I get that rolling. And okay, well, also good luck to you, Adina. I know you're not nervous. You're you're a pro at this stuff, so <laughs> just come home and bring it on home, right? Well, I hope so. Are you going to go easy on Dave here? It's his birthday. Are you going to mess something up on purpose in hopes <laughs> that, that he wins, or are you no, going I'm for this? Out of the way, he's he can mess it up on his own. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very, very true. Sabotage. <laughs> All right. Well, like I said, good luck, Adina, and we'll talk to you in just a few, okay? Okay. All right, Dave, let's uh, bring you back in and let's talk about the five roses. What do we got going on with this one? Okay, well, I, I thought about this cocktail, you know, thinking about flowers, and uh, and I thought about roses. My parents are uh, award-winning award -winning rose growers uh, nationally. Really? They've got hundreds of rose, roses in their yard. Oh, so, wow. Uh, Show some of them. Uh, roses, roses are edible. And uh, here, I just picked these at mom's today. And I mean, they're beautiful. We're talking 200 plus it's, rose bushes and they're just starting to bloom in Illinois. So, uh, so is available. The, so why, why not use what's available here? Is the, is the term Rosarian official? They're consulting Rosarians. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. Wow. You learn something every day on the Bourbon Daily. Yep. Yeah, they, they've, been, uh, they've been doing this for a lot of years and they're about ready to retire from it, but uh, they've been been winning awards all over the actually all over the world wow so uh i did this cocktail in honor of mr kevin rose last year's uh, cocktail champ so i figured uh you know kevin and i have a rivalry going back and forth you know so i figured we'll, we'll honor mr rose with this cocktail and uh and, and go with that and i what i what i started doing i started playing with some uh, uh floral flavors and 
you know, okay, we'll let go with bourbon. I figured, well, what better bourbon than four roses? And let, let's see if, uh, you know, a floral type thing goes with four roses. And yeah, it damn well does. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, started looking at ingredients and uh, had some kombucha uh, brewed. And for everyone that doesn't know what kombucha is, it's a fermented tea that you ferment with a bacteria and a yeast, and it actually becomes slightly alcoholic uh, and uh, um, not, not too much, you know, probably a half of ABV, if anything. And uh, what I did was I brewed uh, some kombucha with, uh, with some flowers. I used rose petals, of course, chrysanthemum flowers, elderflower, bud, elderflower buds, and red clover buds. And that was a couple of days in the kombucha. So the kombucha came out uh, nicely floral. And kombucha is naturally sour. Uh, so it's got a little bit of vinegary note, a little, little sour um, note. And it's good for you, by the way, it's probiotic. Um, so I figured, okay, well, the kombucha will go well with the bourbon, and but we're gonna need a little bit of sweetness too. So uh, I, I've got a honey simple syrup I made. And the honey simple is just a one-to-one -one simple syrup. Uh, made with uh, half a cup of water, half quarter cup of uh, demerara sugar, and a quarter cup of honey, and uh, so that sweetness kind of balances okay. off the, the 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 sour in the kombucha. Then I also used a little bit of the uh, IKEA elderflower syrup, which is slightly sweet, and a little bit of that too. So you got the balance of a little bit of tart, a little bit of sweet, and, and it comes out you know nicely drinking. So that's the cocktail anyway. Should we go? Yeah, let's go. Let's see All what right. let's see what you got here. Four roses, small batch, regular okay. old small batch. We're gonna wait a minute. First, I'm gonna fill a shaker with ice. Okay. Wait a tick. All right. For those listening to the podcast, I can confirm he is filling the shaker with ice <laughs> at this juncture. Yeah. Phil, so, Phil, so please do the commentary. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so two ounces of Four Roses small batch. Okay, it's a good start, two ounces. Yep. Is there a reason you chose the small batch over one of I, the other versions? I was gonna ask that, yeah. I didn't have yellow label. So I might've used uh, yellow label, but uh, wasn't gonna use single barrel, wasn't gonna use small batch select, but I had and the- And you like small batch. And I like small batch and there's plenty of that around here and it, and it worked really well. So okay. I went with that one. <laughs> uh, so then, yeah. go with kombucha, and you could hear the carbonation when I opened it up. Kombucha okay. also comes out slightly carbonated after fermentation, so it's got a little bit of nice bubbles and a little bit of a little bit of sparkling to it. Okay. So we go with three ounces of that. Look at that steady hand. Oh yeah, he's good. I haven't spilled anything yet or thrown glitter. So is this uh is this a recipe that you've used before this competition and brought it to the competition to destroy Kevin or <laughs> well no. Okay. I just uh just made did a little up. bit of playing around with uh, combinations of flavors okay. in, in very small quantities, you know. Just take a little bit of the bourbon, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and try it. Does that work? No, you know, try okay. this instead. So next ingredient, I have a little eyedropper here. So I've got rose water. Rose water is really strong stuff. And uh, just to give it a little bit more rosy um, hint to it. So I've just got a couple drops of rose water I'm gonna put in here with an eyedropper. So then uh, we're gonna go with the honey simple. So a half ounce, not much, just enough to bring some sweetness there. Okay. Half ounce of honey simple. Um Tim had a question. McNew, go ahead and, and uh, give Tim's question here. Let me uh, pull up the chat real quick. Tim said, are the use of hands versus an ice scoop an important thing? I'm going to drink it, so I don't care. <laughs> if you're not serving others, don't yes. have to use your hands. We're not picky. <laughs> if, I was, if I was making this for uh, anybody but me, yes, that would be. Or Tim, I would say. It, 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 Tim's a smart ass, so I, that's how I'd make his, too. Tim, I'd probably manhandle your ice. Right, exactly. <laughs> Is the name of this the five roses or the five COVIDs? <laughs> All right, so then I poured in another uh, half ounce of elderflower syrup. This is just the regular IKEA brand of elderflower syrup you can get at the big blue store. Okay. Oh, they, they sell cocktail mixers at IKEA is what yes, I'm learning. Yes, they do. About. 
Yes, they do. Is it particularly <laughs> Swedish? Is it a, a, a well-known Swedish syrup? Elderflower is very Swedish. Yeah, okay. Swedes love elderflower. Good is, to know. Is the a elder... great conversation starter for next time I run into some Swedes. Oh, yeah, that, that's I a great conversation knew. starter. Yeah. So for some reason, like Ikea is like in cahoots with Top Golf, and we're going to go to Top Golf on Friday. So I'm just going to swing over to Ikea and get some cocktail mixers. <laughs> there you go. Is yeah, the elderflower is the elderflower the plant that produces the elderberry? Mm. No, no, okay. they're different. Um, Really? I would have asked. Oh. I would have. I would, I would have assumed it was. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, you know. I thought West was onto something. Right? <laughs> I believe one is a bush and one's kind of a, a, tree. a tree. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The more you know. Right. So you know. last ingredient here is uh, half a teaspoon, or actually one teaspoon of lemon juice. So, you know, after putting the sweetness with the, with the bitter, you'd think, well, the lemon. You know, what's the lemon juice? I made the cocktail without the lemon juice and I'm like, well, it needs a little bit of brightening up. And that's what the lemon juice will do is it'll just kind of kick it up a notch a little bit and lend a little bit of brightness. Yeah. So all those in the shaker. That's a good shaking technique. Phil, you need to commentary this, okay? Yeah. Except our yeah. shaker is he leaking currently, so. He is he is shaking like Isaac from the Love Boat would make the finest cocktail for those on the Lido deck. It is a wonderful. <laughs> oh, no, you should commentate it like it's a horse race. I should. <laughs> a nineteen yeah, twenties so, firefighter. A nineteen twenties firefighter calling a nineteen twenties bartender at a firehouse. There. So this is shaken, not stirred. Okay. And then we're going to strain into a glass. We'll just double strain it here. I've got an extra strainer. Okay, double straining it. Strainer in the shaker and strainer that you have over the glass correct all right mm -hmm. patrick okay. needed to know in the chat if the elderflower liqueur comes with assembly instructions it's not, a look, <laughs> it's not a liqueur this is just a it's a non-alcoholic it's a okay. it's an elderflower okay. yeah. if it was alcoholic it would have the instructions this okay. you don't need instructions right. for that we don't need instructions for all right syrup. so okay. i've got a little <laughs> nice beautiful little glass for this okay and then uh what we're going to do is we're going to garnish it i've got uh just picked them a few minutes ago uh, from my lovely wife's garden. These are some viola flowers. Okay. So those just go into the cocktail. Okay. Then we have these freshly picked roses. So we'll get a we'll get a couple petals. So roses are edible as well. Huh? Yep, absolutely. Okay. As long as they haven't been sprayed. Well, yeah. So I, you know, okay. I had to go, Dad. Which ones didn't you spray? And actually, he sprayed nothing <laughs> yet. So it's good. Okay. It, would you kill someone if you fed them the sprayed roses? Probably wouldn't be good. So, <laughs> and, and here we are, the five roses. Uh, that's beautiful, uh, man. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. Gorgeous. That was well done. Mm -hmm. All right. We are off to a good start. So excellent work there. And uh, next up is Mr. Kevin Rose. Kevin, let's hear about buzzing around the hive. Buzzing around your hive. hive. Yeah, let's the, hear about the, it. The name is oh, Beehive from the uh, old blues song. I'm a King yeah, Old Money Water song, right? King B. There you go. Yeah. Covered by many, 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 many performers over the years. Uh, of course, as uh, Dave mentioned, the required ingredient was edible flowers, and I used a honeysuckle. <clears throat> honeysuckle, okay. Okay. So the first thing I did was create a honeysuckle simple syrup. So just basic simple syrup stuff, cup of sugar, cup of water, and, uh, and, and an orange peel. But the, the trick here is the honeysuckle. So you get the blossoms from the, the honeysuckle, not the leaves, not the, you don't want the little yeah. Yeah. or anything, just the blossoms and preferably the ones that are still white. Uh, why, why the white ones? It, more flavorful, more sure like ready for not, prime time? The, they are, um, they have not, uh, they're fresher. Yeah, I haven't, haven't dried out, haven't dried out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. So uh, you pluck off the honeysuckles, you put them in some cold water just to rinse them off a little bit. Um, and then you add all of those ingredients to a saucepan, you bring it to a simmer, uh, you stir it every now and then. And then once you uh, get the heat going, uh, you allow it to, to steep for an hour and then you strain it into a glass storage container and it looks like this. Okay. What's the purpose for the heatings? Uh, okay. Well, that's that's the way you get the 
the simple syrup made is okay so you're simply trying to get the flavor into the simple syrup right right you're okay. creating the simple syrup through the water and the sugars interaction and the honeysuckle gotcha. is adding the flavor and so is the orange peel yes. science yes science science, science. So, the uh ingredients i've got are two ounces of your favorite tequila uh, three quarter ounces of the honeysuckle simple syrup a half ounce of lemon juice and just a couple of shakes of sassafras uh, and sorghum bitters for good measure. McNew uh, is full of sassafras. Of course. Sassafras. <laughs> sassafras, not sassy. Oh, I see. Um, <laughs> but the what I was trying to do is something that, uh, which most of my cocktails are fairly simple, something that anybody could create. If I can make it, you certainly can. But I thought as we're heading towards summer, um, this is something that would be fun to have uh, with guests or at, a, at a barbecue or sitting around the pool or whatever. So um, first thing is I'm going to go ahead and add in the uh, lemon juice because I've already got it measured in my um, measuring glass. Okay. And then I will add in the honeysuckle simple syrup. All right. All over ice, of course. Then I'm using a El Tesoro uh, okay. barrel pick from a local store here. A couple of ounces of that. All right. Two ounces. One ounces and two ounces. Okay. And then save a little for yourself on the side if you want it. Ah, oh yes. Always a good tip. And then, uh, a couple of shakes of the bitters. Okay. Cap off your shaker. For those listening at home, he's got the one hand next to the head approach. The uh, uh, <laughs> and now he's going over each shoulder, oh, yeah. <laughs> like a like a mamba dance. <laughs> Then you just strain it into a glass. Looks good. Then you can sip or shoot, whatever you choose to do. Cheers, Thanks. very good. Lovely, yeah. Kevin, great job. There we go, yeah. another great job. Okay, great job, Kevin. Now, now, Kevin, which of your ingredients did you procure from Ikea in that in that set? <laughs> That's the theme I this month, think, it's Ikea. I think <laughs> the, um, the cocktail shaker. Right. Is Product. Sure. Maybe the okay. chair you're sitting in. I thought I recognized that. All right. We're trying to get Possible. sponsored, so the more products you use, the happier we are. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to get sponsored. I talked to uh, Sazrak today. They announced that uh, the Tommy Bahama, they're going to be doing that uh, line yep. now. And, yeah, they uh, need you, Steve. <laughs> I know, and I talked to them, and they, they knew I was a fan, and they're going to get me samples. And uh, and uh, I so I sent him you know a show we did on Tommy Bahama when we did the Wait, Bourbon uh, Steve's best life. Sazerac is doing a Tommy Bahama what? Well, Tommy Bahama already has a liquor line out, so they they oh. even have bourbon. They've got rum and different stuff. And I had no idea. It's limited distribution, so now with Sazerac, I assume it's going to be everywhere. So yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, great. I've never tried it, Patrick. Patrick's asking if it's any good. I've never tried it, so. Uh, this will be my first opportunity to give it a whirl. So I'm you sure know, it's fantastic. There was, of course, if there was a Mount Rushmore bourbon legend, you'd have uh, Colonel Blanton, uh, Booker No, and then Tommy Bahama yes. right there. Tommy Bahama. Yes. Of course. Tommy Bahama. Is the, between, yes. between Albert T. Lee and Jimmy Russell is Tommy Bahama. Is the, uh, the Tommy, Bahama. Bahama. Tommy Bahama's in the, yeah, I don't know if he makes it on the Mount Rushmore, but he's in the discussion. That's, that's all I'll say. It's like a little <laughs> rock right under there. All right. All right. We, got, we got sidetracked. Sorry. Adina, uh, you're, you're up next. Uh, the one everyone's worried about is Adina. She is a noted yes. cocktail expert, so we'll see how she does. Our house. Yeah, but Kevin's king of the cocktails, so. And I'm still waiting for you to make me one of those. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah. Well, come on over, neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this one, I, like I said, I call the Bloma Corona, and. I have a very strong Scandinavian background and my grandmother used to make flower crowns with me in the springtime. So when I think of that, I uh, immediately think of the flower crowns in springtime and they make them for both May Day and for um, midsummer, which is the first day of summer. So the first thing I did was, and I did this well beforehand, I don't know if 
You wanna... Right there. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That looks that's, good. That's so beautiful. the glass has a has a floral crown. It looks very yes. nice. Brim glass with flowers. Uh, for the glue, I just used simple syrup and uh, stuck the blossoms on there. Looks wow. a little different. This is like Martha Stewart stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks a little different from the one I, I did the picture of before because those flowers aren't blooming any longer. Right. right. Um, but anyway, so the first thing I do is do that. Then um, I make, I, actually it was started out being a rye cocktail, but the rye in this cocktail turned it a horrible color. Ah. So I changed it to the gin and it was just perfect. So um, what I'm doing, I'm using the uh, Bowling and Birch uh, gin from our friends down at Limestone Branch. Okay. And nice. I'm doing an ounce and a half of that. Oh, heck, I'm making it for myself. It might as well be two. That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> um, then to keep the flower idea going, I use some cream de violette. So <clears throat> I've got another ounce and a half of that. All right. I like it. And then I made a chamomile simple syrup, keeping the flower theme going. So just layering on all, all the flower scents. I have about a quarter ounce of that uh, because the cream de violette is pretty sweet to begin with. Okay. Um, then I do three quarters ounce of fresh lemon juice. I already uh, poured that out. Yep. And I too used the rose water. Rose water coming back. Second appearance. Yes, the rose water comes back. I mean, we're using the same fridge, so. Borrowing <laughs> <laughs> from one Dave, another. Dave is using what ingredients are in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so I put a little rose water in there. Uh, I'll shake it up. I'm going to shake it over here since it's leaking. Mm, yes, we have a uh, Woody Boyd from Cheers shake technique. Off to the side, over the drain. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Over the sink to catch any drips. Okay. And then I too will double strain it. The Rockford Get Shuffle Shake. Lemon ch chunks in there. Okay. For some reason, Phil's on my screen right now. He's not even talking. Okay. Then I thought, well, oh, this cocktail is very nice, but uh, it needs something else. So I got my handy dandy whipper out and mixed. Um, in here, there's two egg whites, uh, one ounce of grape juice, one ounce of lemonade, and two ounces of the cream de violette. Wow. And it has to be. Um, refrigerated for like overnight. And so this was all made up ahead of time. You shake that and Whoa. dispense that into the glass. That's a nice presentation. That should be made table side. That is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Outstanding. So that's pretty that cool. That is what I call the Bloma Corona or the flower. Jeez, crown. that's freaking awesome. Wow. All right, okay. Adina. Yeah. Fantastic. Cool. Gorgeous. Cheers. Thank you. There's a request if you could put that in front of a little closer to the camera. Someone wanted to see a close up of it. And talk while you do it too, in case they have on the speaker view. Oh, yeah. Let me know. There you go. And I love yeah. that it has its own flower crown. That's great. Looks like a nectar great. of the gods. Yeah. Yes. It is. Yeah. Wow. That's Very a Loma cool. Corona if I've ever seen one. <laughs> 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 So, all right. Well, uh, our contestants, their time is now done. The power now shifts to the judges. They now take over the show. And for each of our judges, what we're going to have you do is talk a little bit about uh, our contestants, uh, share what you liked about uh, their cocktails. And then, of course, you will be ranking them. One being your, your favorite, second being your second favorite. And I don't know what third is course it's your third favorite uh there's no bad ones uh, i think all these presentations were great tonight so it's going to be very tough i don't envy the judges i am one myself but uh we're going to start with west though west you're going to be up first again tell right. us what you think and then uh and then rank them all right so i'm going to start uh with kevin roses 
uh, buzzing around your hive. Um, I do love the name. I think it's a very, uh, very creative, uh, very creative name. If anyone follows, if anyone knows Kevin or follows him on social media, he's a huge music buff. So <clears throat> it's not surprising that he would, uh, he would tie in his cocktail to uh, a music theme. So that's, uh, that's cool. I like the idea of the honeysuckle. That's kind of out of the box thinking. Uh, it's very Kentucky of him. Uh, anybody that's from Kentucky or the South, honeysuckle is just one of those uh, just one of those things that as a kid, you know, you, you would go around and pick the honeysuckles and get that little minute amount of, of syrup and juice out of it. It's just one of those weird things that your grandma or your granddad showed you as a kid. So that that was cool to see you use those. Um, I, I like the construction. Uh, I'm not, uh, I guess one question would be, is there a reason you went with uh, the spirit that you went with as opposed to what would just just decide to go with it or you thought it was the best fit for the ingredients or i try i i kind of settled in on the pickle simple syrup as the way i wanted to approach the flower aspect of it and i tried it with a couple of different things and i thought well again in terms of gameplay and trying to differentiate i thought i'll try something with a tequila make a shot out of it and and take that approach okay well in terms of the flavor um, of the simple syrup and the lemon juice and the tequila working together. So. Okay. So I, uh, it's definitely a cocktail that I would try and would like to try. I'm not the biggest tequila person, but we're also not drinking it straight. So uh, I factor that in, but uh, overall it's a, it's an excellent cocktail. Very well thought through, very, uh, very clever, uh, very clever way of adding those ingredients in. Uh, do you want me to score after every one, Steve, or? No, no, just, uh, yeah, just summarize, uh, you know, okay. them and then, uh, then, then rank them. All right, gotcha. All right, next, we're going to go to Dave's, the five roses. Um, so I love the idea of, uh, of using bourbon, uh, specifically four roses uh, into your drink. I had no idea that rose petals were uh, edible. So that's uh, cool. You used actually a fairly wide array of, uh, of, flowers and, and plant-based material, the chrysanthemum, the rose, uh, you got the elderflower. Um, the kombucha tea is kind of cool. I'm not a huge fan of that personally, but I'm sure in the, in the ingredients of a cocktail, it's, it's probably well distributed. so it's not as powerful as one of those kombucha right. drinks that you get. So, uh, that's something that's kind of cool. I like the, um, like the honey, simple syrup, um, I like the lemon juice, uh, I really like the presentation. I think that's, uh, I like that glass style. Uh, and I like, uh, I definitely like the presentation. I think it's just a really cool, uh, very uh, thoughtful uh, and very distinct uh, cocktail that uh, I personally would never even remotely come up with those ingredients and those combinations. So uh, it's a lot of creativity. So I like that. And then I guess last uh, is Adina. Uh, I love the uh, the Bluma Corona name. That's a lot of history of that. I think presentation wise, uh, especially the picture I'm looking at on the show notes, but even the, the live drink, um, that uh, that's just a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful drink in the glass. The creme de violet really kind of pops in the glass. It's uh, it's really dark and it's got that light foam on top of it. Uh, the crown of uh, petals and the crown of flowers on top is a uh, cool uh, little thing to do, especially gluing it on with uh, honey simple syrup, very creative. Uh, I have a question. What's the, the, the rose water came up twice in two different cocktails. Is there an advantage to, to using rose water? Is there a specific reason? I know it's I think it's uh, I think you guys described it as pretty intense and very concentrated. Yeah, it's a nice way to infuse the rose um, taste to something. It's actually okay. a Middle Eastern um, cooking component. Okay. Uh, 
the first time we tried it, I think we tried putting what, like a half ounce or something in and oh boy, that was so way old. too much. Mm, too much. Hey. Mother of God, that's intense. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no shots of rose water then. No, no, drops, no, literally drops. drops. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I like, uh, I like all the ingredients. Um, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a gin fan as far as neat. I do like gin cocktails, um, especially ones as creative as this one. So I, I do like the base uh, spirit in this one as well. And uh, yeah, I love the, uh, I love the foam. I think the foam is, uh, is a really cool, uh, really cool idea. And it kind of uh, makes a very beautiful cocktail kind of have that extra special pop of contrast between the light foam and the dark. Uh, cocktail, so uh, I do appreciate that. Uh, as far as uh, as far as ranking these, Steve, okay, I'm gonna do it in the old dog show style. So uh, with the Dina being the last one that I uh, had uh, critiqued, that's the winner, and then it goes forward after that. So it would be Adina, Dave, and Kevin. Adina, Dave, Kevin. Okay. All right. Next up is gonna be Phil. Yeah, excellent. This was fun. These are great cocktails. I would I would drink any of them the month of May and, and maybe any other time, uh, any other time of the year too. <laughs> Flowers or, or spring aside. So uh, on third place, I'm going to go ahead and 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 put the the five roses right in there. Looks delectable. Love the name. Uh, it actually lifts from one of my favorite jokes I used to tell when I was a Bourbon Trail tour host. I used to take people to Four Roses and say, guys. When we leave here, there's a much better distillery about a mile down the road called the Five Roses Distillery. And we're going to hit up that place after we're done here. We're going to have a blast at Five Roses. Oh my God. And 90% of the time, people are like, aha! And 10% of the time, are like, really? There's a, there's, a, there's a Five Roses Distillery? I've never anyway. heard of it. Amazing. It sounds great. Uh, I liked it. The, the kombucha was the biggest thing that concerned me a little bit. I'm not a fan of the kombucha, especially the bitterness and some of those flavors that go in there. I don't know if I'd, I'd, I'd want it in my cocktail, but just about everything else, especially the kind of refreshment nature of that looked like a winner. Uh, so I, I dug the five roses. So that's number three on my list. Number two, uh, buzzing around your hive. Uh, Kevin, I dig it. It's great stuff. This sounds like the perfect back patio porch cocktail uh, to enjoy on a summer day. Um, my only strike against this one is with the, the saucepan and the simmering, a little more complex than that I might want to make for myself, uh, room for error, uh, but I would love to be served it. I, I, I like the tequila in there. Uh, I love the name, love the connection to the tunes. And uh, it really strikes me as kind of a perfect warm weather, enjoyable. I'd love to see it on a drink menu, a seasonal drink menu at an outdoor patio in Louisville. So yeah, the uh, I don't want to get the name wrong because I've already messed it up in my head three times tonight. Uh, the Blomkin Rod. What? Help me out here, someone. Blomkin? No, it's not Blomkin. <laughs> <laughs> Blom Corona. Bloma Corona. Bloma Corona. Uh, my Sharona. That my Sharona. My the Sharona. My Sharona. Bloma yeah. Corona. My Sharona. My Sharona. That, for that next month. Ryan that, Smith. That's easily my my first place one tonight. Aside from it being just a beautiful drink and a beautiful presentation. And something I would go nuts if I was served at a bar because just the presentation alone from the flower crown all the way to the um, contrast and colors and, and the flavors you put in sound uh, wonderful. On top of all that, when I think of these drinks, I would order from a menu. I'd want something that was a gin or a vodka based drink. I think that mixes best in my mind with some of the flower flavors of the flowers and other kind of florals we put in here. And uh, but I mean, I can't get over the the creativity, the the connections to the the Swedish ties and just the absolutely stunner the gorgeous so that's that's my number one so three five roses third place number two buzzing around your hive and number one uh, my sharona okay all right bloma <laughs> uh, bloma corona did i get it right. right that time Bloma's next up corona. next up is me all right next up is me i'll say this uh great job by all three tonight uh, really brought it fun stuff all good definitely something i'd like to enjoy may is uh, sounds like they're good cocktails for may uh, you guys really hit the theme well so you know good job all around um as as we're going through these you have to go by the narrowest margins of sometimes and you know i i, I think presentation ends up playing a, a big part in this and let, let's be honest adina ewalds is on a different playing field than everybody else. <laughs> she, I, this is like having Jimmy Russell and we're having a monthly contest where who knows the most about bourbon uh, at this point. So, so, but we're not the, the most professional judges. So I'm like, I, we can give people a chance. So I, I have I, too I, much time on my hands. Yeah. They're, they're just <laughs> awesome. I, to me that, that what Adina created is uh, like a fr front uh, cover of a magazine. Uh, I do think it, it could come out like 
pre-made a little bit and then you know the the waiter or waitress finished it off at the at the table with the you know putting the foam in there it's unbelievable so great great presentation you know off the charts uh dave of course what i liked about dave's was uh you know four roses I, and i'm not a kombucha fan either but i think as a cocktail ingredient i think that's where it could could work and uh i, I think that's that that uh, would be okay and uh, and then kevin's you know looked like it'd be delicious and refreshing not as great on the presentation i felt like that's where it suffered a little bit it wasn't wasn't didn't incorporate like a, a floral garnish or anything like that. that 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 could have helped it i felt so what i came up with is as follows uh ranking uh number three would be would be kevin's uh, ranking number two, because I also have in my scoring, what's known as the birthday boost. Uh, if you come on here on your birthday, you, actually, <laughs> oh, get, you actually, you get actually get a little bit of a boost. And that boost was just enough to put Dave over Adina. So that means Adina gets uh, second place and Dave gets third. Wow. How about that? Wow. How about that? That's birthday a, boost for the win. That's the, that's the birthday boost as it's known. Yes. So, uh, mm -hmm. so there you go. McNew, you're the last one. Okay, so I'm going to be a wild card here, as predicted. Um, so if it takes more than like adding simple syrup or bitters to a cocktail, like I'm not making it at home. So when I see these, I like look at the ingredients, look at the techniques and think, would I order this on a menu? So that's kind of how I'm judging these. If I saw it on a menu, would I order it? So I want to say, first of all, Kevin Rose, tequila this time of year is my jam. Like it's if I month. see tequila, May is month like, for tequila, yes, right? It's, yeah. It's, it's hot out. It's Cinco warm. de Mayo. Right, but right. Thinking about tequila and the fact that you used honeysuckle and sassafras, we had the house I grew up in had honeysuckle vines and a sassafras oh. tree. So this is like bringing me right back play, to childhood. Playing to her nostalgia. Um, yeah. Childhood when you're shooting tequila under the sassafras tree. You know, <laughs> being small, shooting tequila, normal stuff. No, <laughs> but, but all those flavors, I think, I do think that they play well together. And I, I love the name. It was so fun. Um, Dave, the, I love the five roses. I love that you used roses and rose water from your parents' garden. Um, I think yours, because it's May, we had Mother's Day. This would have been lovely at like a Mother's Day brunch or something. Like it's, it's so pretty. It's so good. I'm not a personal fan of kombucha, but that would not like scare me away from ordering it if I saw it on a menu. Um, Adina, yours is, oh my gosh, the creativity, like the, the gluing with simple syrup around it mind-blowing and I would love to like see that on a menu I'd be like oh yeah I'm going to take pictures of that it's going to be great um not a fan of egg whites though if I see egg whites on anything I won't order it I stay away from whiskey sours because I'm a weird really? I, I don't like I'm a weird texture person it bothers me oh um, no that's a good whiskey sour. Like, this would have been my number one had it not had egg whites but you did it so well it looked lovely but um that being said, I know I'm a weird texture person. So my number one was Kevin Rose. Tequila, my childhood, just freaking taking it for me. Dave, number five for the use of bourbon, the play on words, loved it. Adina, like, I love yours. It was great, but you were my number three. Okay. Wow. All right. Steve right. with the abacus doing some heavy yeah, math. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right. So, so here's where we stand. Uh, it was a close one. I think this is very reflective of three good efforts. And, uh, but we do have a clear cut winner. So, that being said, in third place with seven points, Kevin Rose. Kevin. Kevin. Not bad. Not bad. A good uh, show, though. Uh, because uh, you wrote your awards article, you get the bronze. You get the bronze and you can uh, promote that on social media. You won a bronze in the well, bronze in the big contest. Which, which, uh, spirits competition. I got a gold. <laughs> right. Yeah, true. Right. Yeah, yeah, maybe, double yeah, gold. Maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe we should do gold, gold, double gold, and platinum. So, so that you can feel really good about yourself. Uh, I thought that was a good article, by the way. Um, yeah, the, the, the stuff is just out of hand, I feel just too much, but I don't know. Uh, and again, you don't want to take away from anybody that's won the stuff. I, right. It's not that matter, it's, but it is just a matter of what's going on with all that. So, very good. All right. Uh, in second place with eight points, the birthday boy, the birthday boy, eight points. <laughs> That means our champion is Adina Ewald. Adina, yeah. 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 Thank you. We all deserve this always. It was beautiful. Adina, would you like to make a speech or anybody? Thank anybody? <laughs> um, well, yeah. I want to thank all of you guys for, for doing this. Um, 
like I said, I just have way too much time to spend on coming up with these things. So um, thank you. And uh, now Dave's going to let me actually drink some of his birthday bourbon. So oh, Dave's going to throw away all his kombucha. Yeah. So no, no. So the fridge is filled with like odd mason jars like this full of weird shit. So you guys just have experiments going all the time, don't right. you? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, she's she's got weird stuff. Now a couple notes though. So the egg whites, McNew. Mm -hmm. Um, those those you don't. That's not really a texture thing. That's what you need in that foamer to make foam. Okay, but I don't like foam. I don't like cocktails with foam on them. It's just yeah. yeah. You okay. you could use aquafaba instead. I don't like it either. Instead of the egg white. <laughs> it, it doesn't okay. taste like anything. And then the it's kombucha. The... So you've you've heard of cocktail shrubs, right? You know, a shrub yeah. for a cocktail, a little vinegary. That's how the kombucha is. Mm. Oh, there you so, go. But you can balance it doesn't that. Taste the like rose water and the elderflower probably balance that out, right? They do, yeah. With the sweetness in there, you don't taste bitter or, or tart or anything, really. Okay. So uh, next month, oh, did you want to, oh, Adina, oh, what do we got here? I was say something about my cocktail. You're never going to get that in a at a bar because it takes forever to glue those flowers on. <laughs> yeah, you're like, we're not doing that. Uh, you it's might have so Molly Wellman. I loved it. That cocktail without the foam, without the flowers is really good. So right. if you want to try it just with the base ingredients. But also, okay. I have a birthday cake here for the birthday oh, boy. Yay. So make a wish. That was the wish for the William LaRue Weller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he no, wished he'd have won the contest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Well, again, congratulations to Adina and thank you to both Kevin and Dave for a great effort and uh, coming on and delivering a great show. Yes, everyone. I can't wait to see what you Seriously. come up with in June. Seriously, in, so creative. In, in June, the uh, theme is Tiki, which is a personal favorite of mine. As you can imagine, I wish Tom Bahama every day. Tiki is a favorite. And uh, the ingredient... Now it is star anise, but we always say star anise because it sounds better. Sorry. Anise is terrible. I hate it. But we did get we did get a, a listener write in and say it's pronounced anise, you jackasses. Yeah. So you know, basically, you know, it was it's it's, it's anise, but but I don't know. We're still going to say star anise next month, right? It, what the? it just looks better. It sounds better. Star anise, make yes. it work. <laughs> went to high school with a girl named Star anise. So that's a nice combination. She had to have a hippie mom. Yeah, I wonder, wonder what her, her job ended up being. Yeah, that sounds like ah, sure. Well, that was the original joke. I, that was the first joke I was going to make. And I decided yeah. to make a PG for our... For our yeah. If you're listening to this and you want to join uh, the contest, feel free. Uh, anybody can join. It's abvnetwork.com slash coin. You do need to have an ABV Network coin. The cool thing is we have a new one in the store. So that celebrates the barrel. So you can pick that up and get in the contest. You just need to have either a Facebook or Instagram account where you post those for the public to see. And there's some other rules like you got to tag McNew and all that kind of stuff so we yeah, should do that so we know me, you did it yeah, and we don't know sure. we yeah. can't help it if you if you join but you don't let us know there's no way for us to you know monitor all of uh instagram and facebook so yeah got to tag us in yeah so I, I do give freebies away if they tag the abb network account i will take it counts, I okay. still run that account but please tag me personally just so i don't have to switch it just makes it easy yeah yeah, yeah we, we try to give some latitude there because we want people to be yeah. in and encourage other folks to get in but yeah please please help us out for sure all right well we'll wrap this show up as we always do by talking about where people can find us let's start with our special guests our judges today mr phil Colin, how you doing, man? Where can people find you? Fine like wine. I've sold three beautiful cocktails. I post the beautiful photos, not as beautiful as these cocktails, but I post the fun photos on Instagram at Derby City Phil, and I say the witty things on Twitter, also at Derby City Phil. All right, Wes. You can find me on Instagram at bourbon underscore Wes, and you can find me on Twitter at bourbon Wes, one word. All right, McNew. I'm on Instagram at McNew ABV. All right. For me, I'm an easy guy to find him at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website that thinks abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, our shop is out there. If you want to get that coin and uh, you know, join in and, and get it on the fun, it all starts though at abvnetwork.com. McDo, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABP network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye, everyone. Outro. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Peace.